Howard Green on BNN. WestJet came out with some record load factor numbers for December, and Ian in Vernon, B.C. has a question on that company. Go ahead. Hi, Dave. thanks for taking my call. I uh, was wondering whether David had an opinion on WestJet. It's uh, done well lately, um, and I've just been watching it go up. Um, I just wonder what your opinion is. Thanks. I'll hang up and listen. Sure. Bye. Uh, so, Ian, I'm just going to go back to the process. I mean, at the end of the day, what I sell is an investment process. Uh, in the current state, uh, we are positive on equity markets. We do think they're going a little bit higher here. Uh, when I look at the sector, 80% of investment return comes at the hands of sector and market. So you've got to get these two pieces right. From a sector standpoint, actually, the airline group is performing really well. Uh, whether you look at Air Canada, you know, which is a different story, uh, we own Air Canada bonds, for instance, mm -hmm. <clears throat> or whether you look at WestJet, or whether you look at Southwest in the U.S., the, the airlines in general are doing well because the consumer is traveling. And with a, an improving housing market, the, the heat is coming off the consumer a little bit. They are traveling. The load factors are going up. And when the load factors go up, it has a tremendous impact on the profitability of airlines. So I think the WestJet is, is a very strong performer. It's, it's in a strong group. Uh, they've got uh, good fundamentals. I think this is one that you could own. Just want to look at a tenure here, David, uh, just in terms of valuation and the run that it has had. It's getting back to levels it saw uh, near in, uh, in 07, back in 04. Do you need to be careful up around the, these levels here? Listen, you, you, you have to be careful in every position that you mm -hmm. own. You have to always be a little bit paranoid about yeah. your investments. Uh, but at the same time, uh, when you find a group that's leading the market in a, in a decent market, you want to take advantage of it. Uh, and I would say that at this point, you know, things are pointing to improvement in the group, improvement in the, um, in the airline industry, improvement in the consumer. Uh, and so this is obviously, you know, pick your spot. This is for an investor who's willing to take some risk because it's much more economically sensitive. There's more volatility attached. Uh, but if you want to own something in a strong market, own what's working now. And the airline group is one that is, is participating mm -hmm. in this bull market. Okay, here's uh, Sarah. She's in uh, Okotoks, Alberta. Hi, Sarah. Hi. I'm wondering what your guests' uh, thoughts are on buying West Timber Fraser at this point. Right. So, again, this is a group that has had a good run to start with, uh, but certainly it does appear that there is improvement taking place in the U.S. housing market, uh, and uh, lumber pricing is moving along with it. So uh, whether it's West Fraser or whether it's Camphor, there's, this whole group is on the move. Again, go with what's working, recognize where you would come out if it stops working, so you want to have a stop on it. Again, this is a higher risk position. Right. Um, but I think that we are not seeing any sign that this, this theme is stopping at this point. Uh, you mentioned that you hold uh, some international paper and some other U.S. companies, Weyerhaeuser. Uh, is there a Canadian company that has maybe underperformed and there's more room to run in this sector that uh, hasn't had the big run-up that West Fraser right. has? So, Mark, you, you, you ask a question that many, many investors ask, mm -hmm. and I'll argue it all day long. You do not want to buy the laggard in the group, okay? It may be that sooner or later, after looking at every other stock, people say, well, fine, I'll buy that one, mm -hmm. right? But it also means that as soon as the group rolls over, that's the one that's going to get shot first. So I would caution anybody against looking for the laggard in the group, hoping that it will come along for the ride at right. some point. You know, the first stock to double in a bull market is the first stock to double again. Go with the leading stocks. They tend to have the best financial metrics. They have the best employees. They have the best ability to make money. Focus on the leaders. All right. Sound advice. So let's talk to Dwayne. He's in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Go ahead, Dwayne. Hi, David. Thanks for taking my call. You're one of my favorite analysts. Uh, my question is on the oil and gas. Operationally, they seem to be firing on all cylinders, but they don't seem to finish any share price appreciation. I get your comments on this. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I just think, uh, Dwayne, that you're fighting a sector move at this point. Uh, it's just a group that is not in favor, uh, and I'm not saying that Legacy isn't a good business. It's just you're in the wrong group. So I think that I would look somewhere else. Wait, see this group start to perform before you start putting your money at risk. Because, you know, look, we're in a decent market. And to be honest with you, the last two months have been better than I would have expected. You know, this liquidity is having an impact in the market. If this can't participate in what has been a very strong two months, I think that wait and see the group break out before you do something. 
Okay, David, uh, Pat is in Markham, Ontario with a question. Go ahead, sir. Oh, hi, thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. My question is on IBM. And um, I, I have been looking to buy IBM, and I was doing some little bit research. And one article I came across recently in Seeking Alpha, a fairly recent article, is that uh, while IBM's EPS is going growing very well, the thing that caught my attention is they say a good proportion of it is coming due to cost cutting and um, in North America, and also a lot of it is also coming from buying back of shares. Uh, in effect, there is no revenue growth. Revenue growth is minimal. So I was wondering what would be um, David's take on that. Right. I'll hang up and listen. Pat, this is a dilemma that we face in a lot of businesses right now. If you look at the profit margins on companies in the S&P 500, they're very, very high relative to history. And if you look at where the earnings have been coming from in general, on most companies that has not been coming from revenue growth, has been coming from cost cutting. So productivity has gone up a lot. Now there are people who would argue that margins should continue to expand across the board. We'll see that. We aren't seeing labor costs move higher. We aren't seeing input costs move higher. So that's a positive. But it is a red flag and it's something that we have to watch. On IBM, I think the reason that it's traded well over the last few years is that it has very good recurring revenue, very good fee revenue, um, and it's got a big global footprint. If you look at it technically, you know, it broke out in, uh, in 2010 at about $130. It's had a great run and it's been consolidating over the last couple of months. You know, I don't think that there's anything wrong with seeing the stock consolidate. Uh, I don't think that that concern about cost cutting is one that should cause you not to buy the stock. Although I would prefer to see something that does have some revenue growth. You know, I'd prefer to look at, uh, if you're going to look in the, in the tech sector in general, say something like a Google <clears throat> that does have revenue growth and it has earnings growth and it's also breaking out of multi-year highs. Um, so I would look at that. I would take a look at a Qualcomm. Um, IBM is going to be a safer position. Uh, you're going to get a little bit of yield and you're going to get a little bit of capital growth. Um, but I don't think it's a problem that they're buying back shares. I think that's ultimately a good thing for the shareholders. And I don't think that it's a big problem that they're cost cutting. And do you hold Google? We do own some Google. Hold some Google yeah. for And I've, I've owned IBM, you know, over the last couple of years. We don't own it currently. Mm -hmm. But there's just some others that are performing a little bit better in this better market. Okay, David, uh, let's take a break here. We'll come right back and have a look at your topics.